Hi guys, I'm Lauren Smith and I'm studying theoretical physics in Trinity. I'll be taking you through to 2021's higher level question one. Today's experiment question is to determine the acceleration due to gravity using a simple pendulum. So let's go. Okay, so here is question one of the 2021 higher level paper and let's just have a little bit of look at this little blurb of information up here. So we are told that this experiment is to determine the acceleration due to gravity and we determine the acceleration due to gravity with the simple pendulum and we are told it is originally of length 300 millimeters. The student suspended the pendulum from a fixed point and set it to oscillate as it does in a simple pendulum experiment and measured the time t for 20 oscillations. This point is key and will really help us out especially when we're drawing our graph. And the procedure was repeated for different lengths L of the pendulum. So for every value of T, you see in the second column of data, that is T for 20 oscillations. Not one oscillation, 20 oscillations. This will become extremely important information when we're looking at, in particular, part four. So let's go on with answering the questions at hand. So in part one, pretty standard, we're asked to draw a label diagram of how the apparatus was arranged in this experiment. And the key thing in this task is that we draw a label diagram, not a diagram, a label diagram. As you can see, my diagram is full of labels because for every label you miss, you will lose one mark and we want to build up as many marks as possible. So since this is a simple pendulum experiment, we have the apparatus here. Your main marks will go for a correct bob arrangement. So the bob is at the end of the string and it's going to be oscillating back and forth. That will get you three marks. And of course, you're going to get marks for the string as well. Because these pieces of apparatus are characteristic to the simple pendulum. Now you can either get the remaining three marks for the split cork, the meter stick, or the timer. Any one of these three that you mention in your diagram will get you three marks. Bearing in mind that you only need one of them to attain full marks. However, my big tip would be to draw and label as much as possible as marking schemes can differ from year to year and some may be harsher than others. Now moving on to part two, we are to indicate on the diagram that we've just drawn for part A, the fixed point of suspension and label part B, we have the distance L. Okay, so here I have just copied the diagram from part one without all of the labels to try and make it as clear as possible to you. But in the exam, I would just indicate on the same diagram that you drew before. I wouldn't be wasting my time drawing out another diagram for parts A and B. But just be really, really clear and make sure everything's neat and tidy so the examiner can see exactly that you understand the task given and that there's no ambiguity as to your knowledge on this section of your question. Okay, so for part A, we're asked to highlight the fixed point of suspension and that will give you three marks if you indicate that the fixed point of suspension is at the very bottom of the cork. And you will get your other three marks for showing that the distance L in part B is from the fixed point of suspension to the center of gravity of the bob. And that's the L that we measure in the experiment. And um, because we measure from the fixed point of suspension to the center of gravity in particular, we treat the bob as a point particle. And it was as if the mathematics would suggest that all of the mass is concentrated at the center of mass of the object, in this case, the bob. Now, in part three, we're asked why the student measured the time for 20 oscillations rather than the time for one oscillation. And the answer is as follows. The error for each oscillation period is greatly decreased when a larger value for time is measured because you can calculate for an average period. And it is also difficult to know when an oscillation period starts or finish. So by doing this, measurement of the period becomes more precise. Now to get full marks here, this blurb of information will get you your full six marks. 
However, if you just want to get your full marks, any of the underlined sentences that I'm boxing off here will get you your full marks. However, this is the fullest answer that you can get. However, if you are pushing for higher marks, know your precautions and error reduction methods in your experiments like these very, very well, because they always ask questions like this in an experiment question. Before we move on to part four, I'd like to draw your attention to pages 18 and 54, which I'll show in a bit, of your formula and tables book. Page 18 for the equation of a line formula, in particular, y is equal to mx plus c, and page 54, which we will be looking at the simple pendulum formula. For part four, we are asked to use the data in the table to draw a suitable graph to calculate the acceleration due to gravity g. The formula which we will be deriving our graph's relation from is the simple pendulum formula, which I just showed you there in the formula tables book. Now, 2 pi and g are constants. The variables in question are l and t. The l is trapped so to speak, in a square root. So it is going to be a little bit more difficult or not even as nice a graph to draw if we were to draw a graph of t versus the square root of l. So what we're going to do is we're going to square this formula to get rid of that square root. And we are left with t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over g multiplied by l. So now our two variables in question that we need to find a relationship from is t squared and l t being the period and l being the length of the simple pendulum, which we already saw in our diagrams earlier. Now moving our attention on to the data table which we were shown. My biggest tip would be to copy down a fresh clear table like the one I have below in your exam booklet with um, a little workings margin as shown here. And I use this margin to show explicitly how to convert these measurements into SI units or units needed for the graph. So the data recorded for the length of the simple pendulum is in millimetres. We need it in metres because that is an SI unit. So converting millimetres into metres, we're just going to divide by 1000. Now when converting from millimetres to metres, we need to divide each measurement of L by 1000. So taking an example here, we have 300 millimetres divided by 1,000 is equal to 0 0.3 metres. When converting from millimetres to metres, we need to divide our lengths of the pendulum that are recorded here by 1,000. So we have, say for an example here, which I'd put in my workings, 300 divided by 1,000. And if you put that into your calculator, that's just going to give you out 0 0.3 metres. And in our newly drawn table, I would write in our new measurement because this table will come in extremely handy when you're actually drawing the graph. And you can just continue this method on for the rest of your pendulum lengths, which I'm just going to do now. Now, to get the values for t squared, it's going to be a little bit more involved, but not too much. As we read earlier, this value of t, and I told you that it would come up later in the question, is for 20 oscillations and we need one oscillation to find the period for one oscillation and then we're going to square it. So in our workings we can show so in our workings we can show that t divided by 20 is the time for one oscillation or one period t but we need to find t squared and t squared is just going to be t small t divided by 20 squared okay this is great so i'm just going to do it with an example say for the first data point where t is equal to 22 so all of that is going to be 22 divided by 20 and that's all going to be squared and that's going to be our first data point for t squared putting this into our calculator because i'm not that good i can't do it in my head but before I hit the fraction button. I just want to make sure that I have my brackets because they'll come in very, very handy for squaring this whole thing. 
and you get 1.21 seconds squared. That's the unit. And that's very important to know, especially when you're going to be labeling your axes later. And I'm going to put this in my new table. And I'm going to do it to two decimal places for all of my other data points that I'm now going to calculate and fill in. And if you get all of these period squared marks or T squared marks over here correct, you will get your first three marks. So these tables are worth copying out really nicely. So we're still on part four in our next stage in drawing out a fabulous graph. We're going to turn to the formula y is equal to mx plus c, i.e. the equation of a line formula, because any graph that you draw, any in-detail graph that you draw in Leaving Cert Physics, you are going to have a directly proportional graph. You are going to have a linear graph through the origin between your two variables. Let's look at the formula that we had earlier, which was t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over g times l. And this here, 4 pi squared over g, this is a constant. It is the proportionality constant between the variables t squared and l. And that is equivalent to the slope m. The independent variable, which we're going to look at as x, is going to be l because the values of the period depend on the values of l. So we first select a value for l or the length. And that determines the period which we measure afterwards. So our dependent variable, or y, it's going to be t squared. So t squared values are going to go on the y-axis, l values are going to go on the x-axis. And the graph itself goes through the origin because the y-intercept c is equal to zero. And from this, we can draw a pretty nice graph. And here is a graph that... So, here is a similar graph to maybe what you've drawn, but I can assure you we can clean up all of the marks that we can with this graph because we have our labeled axes, which are scaled correctly. You have your variable correctly put in and you also have your unit. So they're the three things I would always keep in mind when you are focusing your attention on your axes of a graph. And we have the same, obviously, for our y axis or a T squared axis now. And for your correctly labeled axes, you will get three marks. Your correct points plotted, which are in pink, they're going to give you three marks. And these are the exact points from the table which we drew out, our new table. And a line of best fit, obviously in purple, which will give you your final three marks. So my tips would be the line of best fit must go through the origin as per the formula because we saw that the y-intercept of the true relation between these two variables, t squared and l, is zero. So I have it that over here. And we'd like an even amount of points on the left and the right or as much as possible on the, the points on the line, which I have here. And always, always, always when you're in the exam, use a ruler. And you don't really explicitly need to, but I think it's good practice. Maybe put a title on top of your graph because you're going to be drawing a lot of graphs in the exam and it can be very easy to have them mixed up, especially with the examiner. So always put a title on top of your graph so the examiner knows which one that they need to mark per question. So before moving on to part five, I want to show you page 18 again of the Vormian Tables book where we will be looking where we will be looking at the slope formula this time. In part five, we might be looking at the most important aspect of this whole experiment that the student carried out, which is determining the acceleration due to gravity g. In part four, we showed that the slope m is in fact equal to four pi squared over g, which means that g is equal to four pi squared over m. So we need to find the slope m given by the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we need to find two points on the line of best fit in order to find the slope. Stating this formula or copying it from the formula tables book will give you your first three marks. So my first tip would be always pick x1, y1 as 0, 0 or the origin. Because as we showed in the last question, that the 
origin or zero zero is always going to be on the line of best fit. So this makes your calculation way easier because you know that this point is on the line of best fit and it's always going to be correct. Which simplifies our formula right down to m is equal to y2 over x2. So we need to find one point and that point needs to be on the line of best fit. Never pick a point from the table of values that you've given or that you've calculated. Always pick one from your best fit line. The definition of a best fit line is a line which best expresses the relationship between the variables at hand. This is important to note in experimental science and we want to find as accurate a value as possible for the acceleration due to gravity g. So let's find this next point and we're going to turn our attention to the graph that we drew in part four, which I've just copied down here. You can choose any point that you want on your best fit line as long as it's not one of the highlighted red points, excluding the origin of course, because we use that as our first point. I'm going to use the point 0 0.25 1.0 which I have highlighted and circled in gold on which is on our best fit line and that would be my tip always circle and highlight your chosen points on the best fit line for the examiner to see explicitly clearly that okay this point is on the best fit line. So. Doing this calculation to determine g, we know that m is equal to y2 over x2, which is equal to 1.0 over 0 0.25, which is equal to, I mean, this is clearly 4, but to check in our calculator, 1.0 over 0 0.25, that's equal to 4. We know that g, which is what we need to calculate, is equal to 4 pi squared over m, the slope, which is just now equal to substituting in our value for the slope, which is four. And let's put this now into our calculator. Four pi squared over, we stored the answer as the slope, which is four. So we can just pop this in. That would be kind of my tip. Just kind of get really familiar and handy and know all the tricks behind your calculator use because it can really save time and energy in the exam. And this is our value for G. 9.8696 roughly which is roughly 9.8 meters per second per second don't forget your units for the acceleration due to gravity they are extremely important and your final three marks go for showing that your answer for g is approximately 9.8 meters per second per second which we have shown